2021 was the year of driving for me. Finally, this car has been reliable enough for me to get some really good seat time here. I have plans. They may involve building more horsepower. But first, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has bought our merch throughout the past year. It's all available at refined-movement.com. So if you guys remember back, I had swapped in a low miles JDM D16A into this car. That was actually 2020. <laughs> It's smoking a bit, but I mean, that's pretty normal. All the dust and whatever built up on that header. Idling pretty good. But it kind of sat like that for a long time. It was a real bad scenario where I was like waiting for parts and blah, 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 blah. All this stuff happened. Well, towards the tail end of 2020, I started to get some track time in. For 2021, I just continued on with that and got some really great seat time in this year. Bunch of different track days at the firm and a brand new track for me, West Palm Beach International Raceway, and I got my eye on Sebring next. But so there really wasn't a whole lot of working going on in this car, which was actually kind of nice. Like, I've spent so much time wrenching on this thing. Like at some points I almost forget like, why am I doing this again? Like, do, do I just wrench on this just to wrench on it? It's fun, don't get me wrong. Like I really do enjoy the wrenching and the building times. That's one aspect of the car life. The other aspect for me that is a major priority is driving this thing, getting better, having that seat time. So as I'm thinking about it, really the only big project that I found myself getting into this past year working on the car was not even really a nuts and bolts kind of part actually got into making carbon fiber. Have you ever seen a full carbon fiber bumper stiffener bar for a 92 to 95 EG? Do you even know what a bumper stiffener bar is for an EG? It's probably a pretty overlooked part. I handmade this piece entirely out of carbon fiber. So what I was thinking is I needed to go ahead and get a template to where I could cut my carbon fiber to length and make sure that it's roughly the same each time. So you see here I covered up the holes on the bumper bar. Here we go, cutting the carbon fiber. I ended up cutting five layers of the stuff. Um, cutting carbon fiber, it's it's crazy, man. They're, they are just the thinnest little fibers. And so if you go ahead and cut it and you don't have that kind of masking tape to work off of, the fibers can start going everywhere and the thing will start unraveling and it's a total freaking mess. This guy right here is starting to tack up good. You see how it's laid down super smooth. That's what we want, man. So then I just keep laying down the carbon fibers. <laughs> I went ahead and put this perforated release film on the back and I'm wrapping it up in the breather bleeder. Dudes, check it out, man. So I felt comfortable to go ahead and get the drill out. So naturally, this being my first go at this, this thing is not perfect aesthetically. It has a whole bunch of flaws in the finish. Things that I think I can actually go in and start to sand down, you know, smooth that out a bit and maybe buff it back up with a nice polish. All right, now let's see how much these things weigh. That one's the original piece. There's the carbon fiber. It's the original bumper bar. 
194 grams. That's all aluminum or steel, I'm not sure what it is, but 194 grams. The carbon fiber piece, 40 grams. Yo. That was actually a really cool project. Like, I don't know, I just got so involved and like, I wanna make my own parts. Like, who doesn't wanna do that at some point, you know? Like, I tried to start small and that's exactly what I did. I was messing around with the little uh, cutout piece for the dash. If you know on the EG, they have like the little cutout where the AC vent would go in the very middle of the dash. And it was very unsuccessful. Those were definitely the test runs. And I started off with fiberglass just to kind of work with a material that's kind of like it because carbon fiber is kind of expensive. Not to mention very time consuming. Fiberglass is no different in the time consuming area, but it's super cheap. So I was messing with that. I made a piece. It sucked, like this sucked. But I learned a lot from it. And I think that's kind of my whole car journey summed up. Like I'll start doing something just cause I want to try to do it. It sucks, but I learned a whole lot. <laughs> And from all that learning, actually something really cool came of it. This is a bumper stiffener bar. So if you put the front bumper on the EG on, at the very front, it's got this stiffener bar. It's made of this like aluminum, pretty thick kind of stamped material. I think it has four or five, six kind of bolts going through it. But why did I choose that piece? Well, kind of first off, because I've never seen one. I've seen some people making them out of aluminum and uh, there's really only one company that comes to mind that does that. Other than that, I really just see people painting these things black. So I was like, wow, that would be super cool. And it's such a eye-catching piece as well. You open up the hood, boom, it's right there. So believe it or not, this thing is actually functional. Like, it works. I even did a test of that to see. And it actually sits on the bumper as it should. And I'm able to bolt the thing down and it looks great on the car. And what's really cool about carbon fiber is, yeah, I saved weight. Granted, this is like, you know, if you, if you go to the bathroom really big in the morning, you're gonna save as much weight as this thing does. <laughs> but it saved weight. That original piece weighed, I forget how much it weighs, I'll show it on screen. And this thing actually came in at a significant amount less. So you could see that if you scaled that up to a bigger part, like, I was able to try to make a fender or something like that. It would actually really save the weight. The carbon fiber is really, really cool. Like I said though, aside from that, like I really didn't have to do any hardcore wrenching on this car this year. And I tracked the crap out of this thing. Like it was awesome, man. That's what I've been wanting for so long. That Gran Turismo approach of, you know, drive the car, get the seat time then decide what you think you need to go faster. I've got a really good handle on this car at the minute. I'm not saying I'm like the best driver in the world, but I have improved a lot. I'm running at a level that I know is respectable. You guys see that thing? That was in the car before. It's got the nice advanced cylinder heads, refreshing cylinder head on that thing. Three angle valve job, it's nice. Some stuff might be going on, I don't know. I'm so happy with the reliability of this car right now though. You know, knock on wood somewhere, like sitting on a wood stool here. I've been able to drive this car a lot and going out to the firm consistently for a few months in a row for me was really big, really confidence building. Where I was around the minute 35s when I very first started and now I'm in the minute 26s, which is just an arbitrary number if you've never been out to the firm, I get that. But I know for a D-series, you know, for the power level that I'm running and the weight of this car, it's a respectable number. So to prove that, actually I got first place in time trial six. Firm's running a really cool time attack event out there. So we went out and did a few of those events and then we also made it out to West Palm Beach International Raceway. My very first time out there. And to be honest, I was kind of overlooking that track. Like if you look at it just on a map, it doesn't look that exciting. At least it didn't to me, but oh my God, getting out there, that thing was amazing. Like the speed that you can carry down there, granted D-series, Civic, speed, all relative here. But the speed that you could carry down that main straight and then bombing into this big right-handed, big sweeping corner, God, so fun, man. So we're stopped right now, it's a black flag because Miata went off. And here's that corner I was telling you about. Big right-hander here. This is what 
Todd's killing the left. See, it keeps going all the way over there, but we're going to pit in over here. But all through there, man. It's a challenging, challenging corner. And here's pit road. And into the pits. I actually hit 107 miles an hour going down that straight. And you know, for me with a stock engine, stock transmission, that was pretty good. But of course, when the Ferraris and Corvettes and stuff would come up behind me, you know, they're flying by me like a standard. Still, but that's not the point. My fight isn't with them. There was like a BRZ out there and a Mini Cooper, and those are around a couple hundred horsepower. And I was able to kind of play with them for a minute through the corners and hang respectably, I would say, until they would absolutely lose me on the straight as well. 200 horsepower is not a big number, but it's still double what I've got in this car. <laughs> You've made it this far thank you very much i really appreciate you and so you i want you to know this i have plans plans that i hope are going to be very exciting for you guys i know i am very excited they may involve building more horsepower so i'll leave that there for right now but know this stuff is coming and 2022 is going to be a great year for this channel numbers wise and all that i don't know but for me personally, I am super excited. I really hope that you guys will be excited to see this stuff too. And I got a feeling you will be. And so, because I'm definitely curious to know, what would you like to see on this channel? Why do you keep tuning into this channel? I really am curious to know that. And so I'm just gonna flat out ask. I know we're not a big channel, not by any means. I have a very small niche because of the engine that I have and the car that I have. I totally get that. But there are some of you that have stuck around for a long, long time and just straight from me to you, thank you. I love seeing the comments or even the likes or whatever. That's, and that sounds, that sounds so lame when I say that, but it's true because that's the only way that I know that you all are interacting with me is when I see those same faces or same profile names liking something or commenting on something, like I don't directly know you. You don't directly know me. We're just doing this thing through the video. You know, this thing, like whatever this thing is. What brings you back? What, what would you want to see out of this channel? You know, keeping in mind that my general sense is obviously not just to build crazy amounts of horsepower and let's build five cars at a time. Like, I'm not that guy. Um, I would love to have some different projects going on at different stages, but this is still my focus. And now that I have a very good baseline of driving this car, I want to go ahead and start improving the thing. So keeping that in mind, what would you like to see? I'm really curious to know and any answer that you provide, cool. And on that note, again, you guys, Thank you so much for watching. 2022 is gonna be great for this channel. I can't wait to bring it to you all. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy, and I'll talk to you in the next one.